Hello and welcome to today's video. So today I want to talk to you about what the symptom mean versus what we make it mean. This is a really interesting concept and this is a concept that absolutely changed my understanding of how the body works and what healing is and how to heal. And this is a really important distinction to make because your symptoms, the symptoms that come from your body are second to second biofeedback. Your body communicating with you, telling you what it wants, what it needs, how it needs to be supported, what's working, what isn't. All your symptoms are a clue. You don't have random symptoms. The thing that's happening in your toe is connected to the thing that's happening in your hip, is connected to the thing that's happening in your gut. Like everything is connected. They're all very intrinsically connected in a, a marvelously incomprehensible way. And we can glimpse that and we can look at that through things like metaphysics or understanding the emotional root cause or looking at what thing certain parts of the body represent. But there's so much going on here. It's very, it's very nuanced and it's always individualized. What something means, what one symptom means for one person means something different for somebody else. And you have to look at these things in a very holistic perspective. But what I want to talk to you about today is what the symptom actually means versus what we make it mean. And it's really important that we make this distinction because sometimes we will experience a symptom and then we make it mean something that it doesn't. And that pushes us down the wrong trajectory. This moves us away from resolving the symptom because we've made the symptom mean something that it doesn't. So the most common place that this happens is we experience some kind of symptom in the body. And this is, this is going to help you really distinguish if this is something you're doing yourself. We have a symptom manifest inside the body. The symptom means something. If you are able to find the true meaning of it, you will know that you, you have found the true meaning because you will feel very grounded, you'll feel very centered, and you will feel like you have some, not, it's not like a logical understanding, like one plus one equals two. You won't really, it doesn't make logical sense, but you will have this like sort of serenity, this calmness within you that's like, okay, I understand that this is what that symptom means. And this makes sense, even if it doesn't make sense in a logical way, it makes sense in maybe in a rational or an emotional way. But you'll feel it, you know, intuitively, you know, okay, this is right, this sticks. And on the other hand, you will not be able to get yourself grounded. You'll have a symptom and it will be triggering you into a certain emotional state. And that emotional state will be driving your action. So you may have a symptom that makes you feel depressed or hopeless, despair, um, anger, frustration. If you're feeling any of these emotions towards one of your symptoms, the conclusion that you're drawing from what the symptom is telling you is wrong. You are projecting an emotion onto the symptom that you're experiencing. And if you try to pursue resolution of the symptom, while the while you're still holding this emotional charge. So if you are, let's say, for example, you have a gut problem and you're feeling a lot of despair and you go and pay somebody and work with somebody when you're still holding this energy of despair to try and resolve the gut problem. I guarantee you the work with that person will result in you feeling more and more and more despair. Because whenever you take an action based in a certain emotional state, you're basically cultivating that emotional state you are making it bigger, you're creating more, you're gonna experience more of that emotion. So if you are angry when you make a decision, the consequences of that decision are probably gonna to continue to make you angry. If you're feeling resentful or hateful or spiteful when you make a decision, that decision is probably gonna give, is gonna feed that emotion and you're gonna have more to be resentful, hateful and spiteful about in the future. Whereas if you take an action of a, of a positive emotion, if you feel empowerment, so say for example, you're choosing to work with somebody, but it isn't coming from this place of despair. It's coming from a place of, this is right. I am empowered. This is the right decision for me. This is my path. I feel responsible here and this feels right inside me. And it's coming from a positive emotional state. Regardless of who it is, it's probably gonna be productive because you are pursuing Whatever it is you're pursuing, you're doing in a certain emotional state, you're, it's going to reflect in more of that emotional state. So this can be kind of tricky because if you do something in a state of feeling hopeful, it's going to it's going to lead you to feeling more hopeful, which is good. But it's also not not the best because you don't want to be feeling hopeful. You want to be feeling resolved. You want to be feeling like empowered, like 
you want to be feeling that sensation of like solution. You know, hopeful isn't, hopeful isn't, this is solved, this is fixed, I'm empowered, I'm whole, it's done. This is like, I believe it's possible that it could be done. I believe it's possible that I, that something could go well. So that is still a better state than despair, but it isn't, it still isn't that empowered, that, that fully empowered state towards the end of where, where we're aiming for. So when you are looking at a symptom, try and separate the symptom itself and what the symptom is actually telling you versus the emotion that you feel towards it and the emotional state that it puts you in and make sure that whenever you make a decision about what to do about the symptom that you're experiencing, you, you remove the charge of the emotion. So the emotion that you're feeling towards the symptom is a completely separate thing that needs to be worked on by itself. It's, they're connected, but they're not the same. They're, 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 you can split them apart and work on them individually. But if you try to fix the physical thing, while you're still in the emotional state of the emotion you're feeling towards it, you're not going to find resolution. You're going to feel more of the emotion that you were in when you when you were trying to solve it. And and that sucks because I've been there. I've seen lots of other people there. You have to really be in the right state when you make a decision like this. So creating this bridge, creating this, this distance between what the symptom is actually telling you versus what you're making the symptom mean. So I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a, a first hand example. So I broke, I broke a fast today. I finished, I did 22 hours of fasting. It's the first time I fasted in over a year. And what, when I finished eating, I had a slight histamine reaction. So my eyes started getting itchy and I got this like veiny sensation. It was extremely uncomfortable. And immediately, so there's the physical symptom, right? And that came up. But then the emotional trigger that I have had attached to that in the past fled up as well. And it was like, everything's going wrong. You can't eat what you want anymore. You, you have to go back and be restrictive again. This symptom means that you've you've lost your tolerance to foods, like you fucked it up, you knew you were gonna fuck it up, why did you do this? Why did you take that risk? And it was like this, there was this like guilt, this blame, this fear, that like all of these emotions. And if I were to continue taking an action based in that emotional state, so that I would like restrict my diet, change all my supplements, panic and go and work with somebody that I don't really feel aligned with, but I'm gonna do it because I'm in a state of despair, that would be a huge downhill. Whereas instead I was able to, because I've, I've been, this isn't my first rodeo with this symptom onset. So I was like, okay, take a breath. Let's separate the symptom, what it's, what it actually is versus what I'm making it mean. So once I separate them out, I was like, okay, I'm making it mean this. I'm making it mean that. Is any of this actually true? No. Okay. So let's get all of that out of the way. But then I came back to a place of self-trust. I was like, okay, my body's intelligent. It's doing this for a reason. What's going on? And I started a dialogue with my body. I started to communicate with it. I was like, okay, what is happening here? And it said, well, you just fasted for 22 hours. You know, that is not an inconsiderate, an, that is quite a considerable amount of time to not eat food, especially if you haven't done it in over a year. You know, that's, that, that's, that's quite a shock to the system. And then my logical mind kicked in and it was like, yeah, and you weren't taking your digestive enzymes. So the amylase acts as a master stabilizer. It could be that. You also probably release a lot of toxicity from your body and that could be, stabilizing your immune system and you having this little reaction is an adaptive response to to kind of kick you back online and you probably altered the composition of your gut flora and maybe some of them got killed and they released some histamine and your liver was already struggling with all of this work that you gave it while it was doing the fasting so maybe it's just a little bit overloaded and i was like okay fine okay yeah this isn't forever you know this is just temporary okay so uh, then i asked my body i was like okay so what now i understand what this actually means what do you need me to do about it? And I just felt in my body and I was starving. I was absolutely starving. I was extremely hungry. So I just realized, okay, all my body's asking me for with this reaction is it just needs me to eat some food. That's it. And I went home and I ate as much as I want. And I ate, I ate a lot, you know, I ate a lot of food. And immediately after eating, the reaction went away. And like in your logical mind, this might not make any sense because I was having a histamine reaction or for, for what in my body a histamine reaction manifests as. And I ate foods that were very high in histamine. You know, I was having butter, I was having broth, all of it was leftovers, sourdough bread, literally everything really high in histamine. But it's exactly what my body was asking me for. I ate and the histamine reaction went away. So it doesn't make sense with the logical mind. You'd think, okay, well, if you're having a histamine reaction and you eat foods that have histamine in them, then you're gonna, it's gonna make it worse. That's not true. What you have to understand is, 
your body is a marvelously complex machine that works in so many ways that science doesn't even understand yet. If you're having, a, say, a histamine reaction, and even if you eat a food that's high in histamine, if it provides your body with what it needs to mitigate the histamine in the food plus anything that's happening inside your body, you it, the reaction will go away. So even if you eat something that is high in histamine and you're having a histamine reaction, but you're providing your body with the nutrients that it needs to process whatever is it's causing a backlog of histamine in your body, the reaction goes away. And yeah, there's you can like look into the science of this and you can try and figure out all these pathways and you can look at methylation and transulfuration and all these like complex stuff. And yeah, maybe that's where you're at in your process and you need to do that. But the bottom line is, you don't need to know with your logical mind. You just need to trust your body and your body will tell you what it needs and what it needs you to provide it to be healthy. Because as I said at the beginning, every symptom is a clue. Every symptom is a second to second, moment to moment biofeedback system that is telling you we're moving towards health. We're moving towards health. We're off track. We're off track. Move back on track. It's trying to talk to you. And that's why it's so important that we we know how to create this split where we know whether this is what your body is actually telling you to do versus are you are you stuck in a charged emotional state and pursuing a course of action to avoid feeling despair, hopeless, anger, rage, frustration, which actually perpetuates that emotional state? Or are you listening to what your body is actually telling you and doing what your body's asking, which results in literally like almost immediate abundant health? It really, it sounds, it sounds complicated, but it also sounds really simple. And it, I suppose it is a little bit of both because to say, trust your body and eat what it asks you to eat. It sounds really easy to do, but when you're laced with like food sensitivities and you've got digestive problems and there's so much complex stuff in the mix, it, it can be hard. And especially when we have all of these emotions tied to all of these symptoms, it can be really difficult to pick, to pick these things apart. And I'll, I'll tell you. I did a lot of this by myself, but there's no way I would have been able to do this all by myself. You know, every person is responsible for their own healing process. And ultimately it's your responsibility. It's on your shoulders and you're the one that's going to give yourself the best results, but you're not going to do it alone. You are absolutely not going to do it by yourself. If you think you are, I'm sorry, you're just wrong. I've learned this myself. I try to do this all by myself and you'll only get so far you are still the most responsible person and you're still going to contribute the most to your healing process. But you need other people. They will give you little fragments of insight. They will give you suggestions, ideas. They will give you new perspectives, new ways of understanding things. And your mind, your mind is stuck thinking in a certain way and that, that's where you're stuck. And without external perspective, without external help, without ex external guidance, it's very unlikely that you're gonna dig yourself out of your own hole. It's so much easier to just ask somebody that has already dug themselves out of their own hole or they've helped other people dig themselves out of their holes. Like, give me some insight, give me a give me a shortcut. You don't have to suffer for years and years and years through this process. You can you can fast track it, but it does require that you take action and it does require that you trust that feeling, you know, inside your body. Clear that emotional state, make sure that you're not taking an action based in a state of hopelessness, despair, anger, frustration, feel that grounded like certainty, that knowledge, that empowerment that I am fully responsible for my health and following that train of thought, I will find somebody that is going to support me in my own self-responsibility and help me find the results that I'm looking for. So don't try and go this alone. It's really, I wouldn't say it's impossible because you probably can do it, but you only have so many years on the earth, why would you want to spend half of them trying to figure out your chronic health problem when you could just fast track it and get back to doing whatever the hell it is that you want to do? I'm going to India in a couple of days and I'm really excited to do that. Next week, I'm flying to India, never never been jet lagged, never left Europe, really excited. So I'm, I'm back to living again I, and you can do it too. You can get back to living. You can build that communication with your body. You can know what it's telling you. You can learn how to receive that second to second, moment to moment biofeedback from your body with every symptom that you're receiving and know exactly what your body's asking you to do and exactly what you need to change or modify to achieve your highest levels of health and healing. That's everything for me today. Hope it's been really helpful. If you have any questions about this, I would I'd love to answer them. So even if you're watching this after the live has finished, definitely leave me your questions. This is such an interesting topic for me. 
and I would be so happy to help you with anything. So just reach out, let me know, leave me your questions, and I'll see you soon. Bye.